guys this is Mobin. we are talking about type 4 hypersensitivity reaction in, the, in our lecture today. So, the most important thing about the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction or if I step back many of my students I see them sometimes struggling with the contact dermatitis versus PPD and what is the difference between them and, and MS and diabetes you know type 1 diabetes and so on. So, we are going to address that why how do we figure out what is the difference between these things and then what are the subtypes of the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction and how to figure out the difference between these. So, it is very simple. So, let us get to it. First of all some characteristics of the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. The most important one is no antibodies. Type 1, 2 and 3 involve antibodies or immunoglobulins. Type 4 do not have antibodies rather cells are involved that is why it is also called cellular hypersensitivity. Now, within the cells the kind of cells that participate in this are and do not forget this these are all uh, USMLE question targets. So, CD4 positive both T helper 1 and T helper 2. So, I know that students know T helper 1 many times they forget that T helper 2 are also going to participate in type 4 hypersensitivity we will talk in our lecture today how. Then the uh, CD8 positive that is CTLs or cytotoxic T lymphocytes these are killer cells and these are end cells or effector cells. Then of course, my macrophages and in this particular case in the type 4 hypersensitivity macrophages act at both ends they act at the APC level that is as professional antigen presentation cells and these also act as killer or effector cells too. So, macrophage will have dual role in this one and then finally eosinophils. And I have seen that uh, the role of eosinophil it, it is in type 1 hypersensitivity we find this role as well when in the asthmatic patients there are eosinophils that are present in the, in the, in the lung tissue. The eosinophil role over here is really as the effector cells as well. They, these may be invoked these cells may be triggered to work to control the hypersensitivity or immune reaction, but they also act as effector cell. So, antibiotics antibodies no cellular uh, hypersensitivity yes. Now, the other thing is this is also called delayed type delayed type hypersensitivity and the reason for that is that this type of hypersensitivity needs 1 to 2 days to develop and usually it is eliminated or it is resolved in many days as well provided the, the triggering substance or agent is removed. If the trigger is not removed if the antigen is not removed then the reaction would continue. So, that is the delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. Now, let us talk about what are the types of this reaction? What are the two subtypes? So, you must have heard the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction is cytotoxic type and um, a macrophage type. So, let us see what does that mean. So, here are the two primary uh, reactions, two primary types. So, one type, so this is how to remember this, this is very important. One type is based on chemical substances hyper hypersensitivity reaction to chemical substances. Now, chem chemical substances mean what soaps some people are actually allergic to various forms of soaps raisins chemical substances poison poison ivy poison oak poison oak jewelry some sort of jewelry polishing. So, nickel metals other jewelry metals or polishes and 
and many others are detergents and other such chemical substances. The importance here is that these chemical substances are the ones these should be absorbable, absorbable from skin. This is important absorbable from skin and the chemical substances. So, one type of subtype of hypersensitivity reaction 4 is because of the chemical substances that are absorbable from skin. So, now it is natural when these are absorbable from skin they will go under the skin and cause the reaction. So, what will happen as a result the skin layer would separate and that separation of the layer would cause blistering. So, please remember many students get confused at how do I remember that blistering is type 4 and what kind of type 4. Very simple absorbable chemical substances would go under the epidermis and they would cause the basilar layer to become separated and that is what would cause blistering. So, whenever you are given a USMLE question with the blistering and vesicles that will be type 4 hypersensitivity chemical substance subtype or contact dermatitis subtype. So, the question is how does this happen? So, let us see it very clearly here. So, the first thing let us make a um, skin layer. So, let us say we have gotten stratum corneum underneath we have gotten the granulosum almost dead cells. Then we have gotten the basilar so, stratum basilar here or basilum and these are the dividing cells, these are the basilar layer cells and then we have gotten the stratum spinosum. So, the cells that are present in this area multiple layers are the stratum spinosum right. So, these are the kind of cells that are present, these are the layers. So, this is the epidermis and then below that is the dermis and so on. Now, what happens is that when we put, when we apply or when we come in contact with chemical substance that is absorbable. So, let us say this is poison ivy or this is a soap or this is a resin or this is a jewelry you are wearing and the polish got absorbed. This absorbed material that goes in what that will do is if we if we zoom that over here if this area is zoomed the cell here the cell the skin cell. So, let us say this is the cell will present this particular chemical substance on, on its MHC class 1. So, on the MHC class 1 molecule and this particular heptin this antigen the chemical substances are usually heptins they are small enough that they by themselves could not cause a reaction. However, once they become absorbed they get bound to the proteins in here do not forget that and bound to a protein the body protein they start looking like an antigen. So, this heptin plus protein combination has become an antigen this antigen is presented on MHC 1. So, please remember in this case in the contact dermatitis case in case of chemical substances that are absorbed from the skin it is the skin cell these are presenting the antigen or heptin on top of MHC 1 not on MHC 2. So, antigen presenting cells the professional APCs are not involved. So, it is natural skin chemical substances skin cells pulled it there are proteins becomes antigen is presented here. Now, what kind of lymphocytes become active with this type of a presentation CD 8 cytotoxic T lymphocytes we have talked about that in our previous lectures. So, I am assuming that you know that. So, let us say here we have gotten a cytotoxic T lymphocyte. So, this is a T lymphocyte of course, the CD 3 marker positive CD 8 marker positive that is the CTL cytotoxic T lymphocyte cytotoxic T lymphocyte. This would have a T cell receptor right that would bind. 
So, this is a T cell receptor that would bind with the MHC1. Remember the rule of 8, the CD8 multiplied by 1 is 8. So, now that binding has occurred. When that binding occurs, this CTL will become active. So, cytotoxic T lymphocyte, now cytotoxic T lymphocyte itself is an end cell, it is an end effector cell. That means, this would cause killing. What is it going to do? So, rem now remember this cell that we are seeing is probably this poor cell. This poor cell is what we are seeing here. When this cell is showing this heptin or antigen on top of it on MHC1, the T cell sitting here, the T cell sitting here is going to release, what are the things it would release? It would release perforins. Perforins would cause perforations, it would cause the holes to be formed in the cell and it would release granzymes. Granzymes, again we have talked about this many times in the past. Granzymes and these granzymes or hand grenades will go in, perforins would cause perforations, Gra granzyme or grenades, grenades would go into the cell and blast in there and result is this cell would become broken. So, this would be lysed breakdown. So, when the cell is broken, what is broken? What is the cell? This is the skin cell. So, when enough cells have been broken, this skin would detach and what would happen is you would see. So, if this was the underneath layers, this layer would start detaching because the cells are now damaged and the result is, so let me make it here, the result is a skin blister. Why? Because the skin became detached, the surfaces, the broken surfaces became detached and that would cause the fluid to accumulate in this space and that is a blister. This blister is the vesicles and blisters of the contact dermatitis. So, <coughs> very important thing, I am sorry, very important thing com chemical substances, they are heptins, this is natural. The pathogens, virus or bacteria do not form heptins, only chemical substances form heptins and because of that the rest you can remember once the chemical substances are in there. So, just remember this at MHC class 1 molecules. sorry, will be taking part in this. That means, CD8 positive cells, lymphocytes will be back. Okay, so, we are back. So, we were talking about the, the cytotoxic. The other one, two types of the, this subtype which is, which is affected by CD8 effector cells is very, very important. So, one you saw chemical substances or contact dermatitis. So, contact dermatitis, dermatitis. The other two types that fall in this category are very important. One is graft versus host reaction. Graft versus host reaction. And the other one is chronic, chronic organ transplant rejection, chronic transplant rejection. So, the question is why are these two in here? These two are in here because these two are also done affected by CD8 cells. So, in the case of grass, graft versus host reaction, again this lecture is not about the transplant. So, I would talk uh, briefly about it. What happens is <coughs> that when we give bone marrow transplant from the donor to the host, so let us say this is the bone marrow, the cytotoxic T lymphocytes CTLs from the donor so, if I am a recipient of the bone marrow, the donor's cell, these cytotoxic T lymphocyte would come out and they would attack the host cells. They would attack the host cell and they would cause killing there. 
So, that is graft versus host, why is it type 4? Because it is initiated by the cytotoxic T lymphocytes. One, it is type 4 because it is cellular and then it is this subtype because it is CTLs. Similarly, chronic transplant rejection, even acute one, these are also done by the T lymphocytes. The only difference is here in the graft versus host, graft versus host, it is hosts, now do not forget this, it is host cells killed by grafts or donors, graft or donors T cells. So, graft or donors T cells killing host cells. However, in the chronic rejection, chronic rejection, we have the host T cells, T cytotoxic T lymphocytes killing the graft cells. So, this is the other way around. So, at the end of the day, it is the cytotoxic T lymphocytes killing the cell. If they are from the bone marrow of the donor, then they, this is graft versus host. So, this is the two more types that fall into this category. All right. Now, let us talk about, I am going to erase this. Now, let us talk about the other subtype, which is, so if I make it here. So, this subtype is because of pathogenic, especially intracellular, intracellular pathogenic antigens. So, what is the difference? This was chemical and this caused T lymphocytes, cytotoxic T lymphocytes to become active. This is pathogen. And this would cause CD4, CD4 positive or helper T cells to become active. So, one side is mediated by CTL, this is the side. The other side and the class 1 MHC uh, complex. So, there is no antigen presentation, professional antigen presentation cells, just the class 1 local cells presenting the antigen locally getting attacked by the lymphocyte CT, CTL 8s and locally causing blisters. In this one, there is CD4 helper cell. So, let us see how this mechanism works. First of all, what are, what are the kind of pathogens that would be that we are talking about? So, we are talking about bacterias, for example, mycobacterium tuberculosis, mycobacterium leprae, that is one. Viruses, most of the viruses are intracellular then fungi or fungi and other intracellular pathogens. So, these are the kind of pathogen. So, of course, in this one, the one that is very important is mycobacterium tuberculosis and mycobacterium leprae. So, this is where of course, if you are talking about mycobacterium tuberculosis over here, then that would mean that PPD or Montox test or lepromine test would fall into this category just because these are pathogenic in nature, correct. So, now, how does this work? We have talked about it many times before in our immunology lectures, but let us talk once more for how this type of reactions work. So, let us see. What happens is a pathogen comes in. So, let us say this is a bacteria that came in. Bacteria, this bacteria was eaten up by the macrophage phagocytosed. So, here is a macrophage that took this bacteria and digested it. Once it has digested this bacteria, it is going to present this on, on, on itself with the MHC class 2 molecule. So, the antigen will be presented on MHC 2. Now, what happens is from here, there are two types of reactions that can occur. There are two possibilities. One possibility is that we will have CD4 positive T helper 1 cells become activated. So, how does that work? The uh, CD4 helper T cell 
over here, let us say the macrophage over here, macrophage is presenting the antigen on class 2, T cell receptor is here, this is a CD4 helper T cell. What macrophage does is macrophage releases interleukin 12, interleukin 12 activates this T cell, T cell releases interleukin 2 that would help itself proliferate. Then what will happen is T cell would release interferon gamma, interferon gamma we have discussed it many times. This interferon gamma would activate the macrophage, activate the macrophage. Now activated macrophage, what does it do? Activated macrophage means increased, so activated macrophage means increase phagocytosis and increased killing by increased production of nitric oxide and increased production of oxygen radicals, oxygen radicals that is how a macrophage kills. So, what would happen activated macrophage is this mechanism. How did the macrophage become activated by interferon gamma release from the T helper 2 cell? How did T helper sorry T helper 1 cell? How did T helper 1 cell become active? Macrophage presented the antigen and released interleukin 12 that caused the T helper 1 cell to become active. It released interleukin 2 that would further activate it then it released the interferon gamma that caused the macrophage to be active and killing would increase. Now the local killing and the release of nitric oxide and oxygen would cause tissue damage, tissue damage. Just like here when the skin cells were destroyed that was tissue damage, tissue damage. So, tissue damage here as well. Now, let us see what happens here the other side. So, once again the uh, CD4 cell. So, when once this MHC is presented CD4 cells here would also be. So, these are CD3 positive, CD4 positive and T helper 2 type of cells these cells once they become active they release interleukin 4 and interleukin 5. Interleukin 5 now this is important interleukin 5 activates eosinophils, interleukin 5 activates eosinophils. So, these are eosinophils these eosinophils in turn release or degranulate when they become activated and their granule, granules have I think proteosomes, major basic protein, major basic protein, histaminases and proteases. So, again what will happen? Tissue damage. So, this is the further subtypes. So, again if you look at the bigger picture type 4 hypersensitivity two subtypes one are the subtypes that are like PPD test we would talk about it in a second, but this is what is the mechanism of action in there macrophages CD4 helper cells activating the macrophages is the mechanism. In the in this uh, CTL or cytotoxic T lymphocyte the MSC class 1 presentation and C cytotoxic T lymphocyte is the mechanism. Now, let us talk about what happens, why is this PPD test? So, what happens is in the type 1 uh, in this subtype you saw blistering and vesicles, in this subtype you would see indurations, induration and granuloma formation. This is the same granuloma that will be formed inside the tissue 
when mycobacterium tuberculosis is present. So, this is the granuloma that will be formed when the PPD test is done. So, how does that test work? So, if we think about it PPD test. So, what happens is they would give some purified purine uh, protein derivatives. These are the extracts of mycobacterium tuberculosis proteins. These are given under the skin. What happens is that creates a little dome in the skin. Then if the person has been exposed to mycobacterium tuberculosis by having a disease in the past. Now, please remember for both of these person has to be exposed twice. The first time would sensitization occur, the second time the reaction would occur. So, it is always re-exposure, it is always re-exposure that causes the issue. So, now PPD is really protein derivative from the mycobacterium tuberculosis. Once that is given, what would happen is that the local cells, local cells, local macrophage cells would present the PPD on it, right. So, what they will do is they will take this PPD and they will go to the local lymph nodes, draining lymph nodes. Over there, the CD4 cells will become active and they will now proliferate and come back to that area and they would go in the whole body. Once they reach that area, they would find more of these antigens sitting in there in this dome shaped. So, once they find antigen, they would also find a lot of macrophages sitting there presenting these antigens. So, these cytotoxic T lymphocytes that were coming from the lymph nodes, these would start attaching with the with these macrophages and these would start activating the macrophages as we discussed here. And so, macrophages in turn would start causing local damage. Plus, the macrophages, if the reaction is severe enough, they would start merging. So, if you look at this area, what you would see is you would see dead tissue there, then you would see the macrophages present there that are active and are doing the killing. You might see giant cells. So, that little in duration and granuloma that is formed that contains activated macrophages, monocytes, inf filtration you know for inflammation plus the local tissue damage. So, what happened there was CD4 cells are, are involved. Okay. So, this is the PPD. How about lepromine test? Lepromine test. That test is same thing. It falls into this category activation of the macrophages. So, if somebody has been exposed to mycobacterium leprae and you give the lepromine test, which is actually again a derivative of the mycobacterium leprae. If the person has competent immune cells, then he would develop the local induration. That means the immune, immune cell or CD4 lymphocytes are active, they would activate the macrophages, reaction would occur. If the reaction does not occur, that means the person is suffering from mycobacterium leprae and his immune cell is actually instead of going to the cellular immunity, it is going to the uh, antibiotics or sorry uh, antibodies or humoral immunity that is wrong reaction and the mycobacterium would cause the damage. So, that is the lepromine test to see what is happening. Negative mean wrong immune reaction, positive mean correct immune reaction. Similarly, histoplasmosis there is skin test for that as well. Viruses can also be tested this way, but they do not find they do not form enough indurations. Now, the question is what are the diseases that are participant in here? So, the diseases that are here are Hashimoto's, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So, in this one which what happens is thyroiditis that CD4 cells activate the macrophages, macrophages then kill the thyroid gland cells. So, again autoimmune these CD4 cells become activated against the thyroid antigens. So, Hashimoto's then type 1 diabetes mellitus and I hope you understand the, the rule of diabetes mellitus, it is always 4 just like we have rule of 8 for immune reactions. The 4 is a type 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. So, type 2 diabetes mellitus is allergic reaction or hypersensitivity reaction type 2. Type 4, type 1 diabetes mellitus multiply it with 4 to get 4 that means it is type 4 uh, hypersensitivity reaction. So, type 1 diabetes mellitus then 
multiple sclerosis. So what happens in type 1 diabetes mellitus is that there are CD4 cells that activate the macrophages that start killing the islet cells. Now in type 4 there is also cytotoxic so that means this mechanism as well but this mechanism is less important and this one is more prevalent. So that is the diabetes mellitus multiple sclerosis. So in the MS what happens is that these CD4 lymphocytes they cross the blood brain barrier go into the brain and over there they, they look at Schwann cells and they, feed, they think that the Schwann cells are antigenic and they, they start activating the macrophages against the Schwann cell that causes the Schwann cells to be damaged that would cause the myelination. So if this is a nerve the myelin cells are going to be to be killed by the macrophages and that causes the symptoms of the uh, MS. So these myelin cells are killed by the Schwann cell uh, by myelin cell or Schwann cell are killed by macrophages. So again CD4 macrophages MS then uh, what are the diseases there are many other uh, diseases for example uh, many uh, neurological uh, ascending pathologies as well are participant of this one and what else am I forgetting something I'm, I think that I am forgetting some important disease here so let me quickly see uh, yeah psoriasis and Guillain-Barre syndrome. So psoriasis is also here and then Guillain-Barre syndrome is also because of the CD4 cells activating the macrophages and then macrophages doing the killing of the tissue cells causing the disease. So this is the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. So if now I asked you what is the contact dermatitis you would say contact dermatitis is because of the chemical substances that would be MSC type 1 that would mean CD8 lymphocytes. So this is the subdivision and if I say what is PPD type PPD is a pathogenic it is derived from a bacteria or a virus uh, bacteria in our case uh, in this case and so this would be macrophage and then the cell and so that would be the um, this uh, subdivision or the cellular subdivision a uh, macrophage subdivision. So this is how to separate them out uh, hope that you understand it thank you very much.